Welcome everyone to the first of uh, the Federal Way Symphony's infomercials for the 2023-24 uh, season. I'm here with our guest soloist uh, Jesus Dutra, who's going to be joining us for music of Franz Liszt for this very frankly borderline spooky Halloween inflected concert, uh, which we have called very unsubtly things that go bump in the night. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the other selections uh, later, but uh, Jesa, first of all, welcome on this uh, obviously very sun-drenched uh, day on which we're making this recording. And um, uh, Jesa is, is one in a series of soloists uh, who very graciously let me twist their arm and say, would you mind learning this piece? Uh, I, uh, I sort of thrust the list on her uh, after we had, uh, we we talked very frankly about music and and um, our feelings about Franz Liszt, I'm a big fan of his. Probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that he and I have the same birthday. Um, but uh, Jesa, I, I wanted you to talk a little bit about uh, your your relationship with Franz Liszt up to this time, and if this piece was something of a surprise, and what it's been like to undertake it and learn it. If you've discovered things about it in the course of it, take it away. Uh, the thing that uh, I want to say first is that I appreciate you challenging me, and that was a, a really great challenge to face. Um, about this piece in particular, I find it fascinating because I see it as, I see it as a theatrical piece. For me, there are two characters there. One, it's almost like I can see play, one is the presence of a character, sort of a Mephisto-like mm -hmm. character. And he shows up strong from the very beginning on the... like on the Mozart opera, mm -hmm. where that big character comes and it is in Mozart's mind of his father. Mm -hmm. So this strong character Mephisto like shows up and for me he's like, I want your soul. <laughs> so the whole piece to me seems to be going between the Mephisto character and the human trying to save his souls. So you see, for example, as an enormous contrast to the very opening, the, the character that I see as the human, let's say the artist, is pleading, please don't take my soul. that I think that uh, Mephisto shows up, for me it's almost like he shows up dancing. You have this section challenging this pure human soul. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I find this piece very theatrical, so I'm having a good time trying to 
get these two characters to shine and mm -hmm. have their contrasting characters come to life. What, uh, what other list do you have in your repertoire at this point? Uh, and and what, how, how do you think this piece fits in with what he had created up to that point and what he was to create over the next several decades? Uh, when I was young, as a teenager, I learned quite a few studies. My piano teacher at the time in Brazil used to say, let's break some rocks, meaning you know, work hard, like, you know, working on this. And I did the Mazepa, La Campanella, Fifulé, those two, you know, the felt technique. And, uh, you know, it, it, like I mentioned to you, it, it was, I was not a huge fan of Liszt. Um, but I have to say that my opinion has changed as I worked on this piece. And I also, I did learn some of his mo more lyric pieces, which was the Consolations. For example, this is Consolation 3. contrast to something like, you know, Malediction or Mazepa, you know. So he had that beautiful side. There's a quote, I don't have it in front of me, um, but Bartok once said something like, when Liszt's achievements are fairly and accurately assessed, people will see that it was he who led us into the 20th century. And uh, I mean, even the opening harmony of, of the, the opening of uh, Malediction uh, in the piano, those harmonies for, for that period of time are rather shocking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Could, could you give us just that opening again with those very brazen, stark chords? shocking for the early 19th century, uh, in, in spite of some of the experiments that had been done up to that point, so, yeah. This passage where it, it goes, it goes from, it almost feel like I have to use a skateboard. <laughs> I think it's this one. Because you know I'm pretty short, and if I was <laughs> if I was six feet, I would just go ball ball like that. But I have to literally, you know. I wish I could put a little skateboard here and go. <laughs> <laughs> So if we could hold a little bit there, so give me time to get from one edge to the other. <laughs> I I promise I won't rush you. I promise. <laughs> So those are some of the, the passages that come to mind, you know, right now. It's hard for me to remember everything, but that would be some of it. Okay. From your perspective, which passage do you, do you think that I should be most careful with? I've, I've, well, my, my job is to make it so you don't have to be careful. My, my job is to make it so you can just emote and be free and be your expressive self and we will be your willing servants so 
anyway, so that, that's the approach I've been taking from the perspective of what I want to communicate emotionally, which are those two contrasting characters, like I mentioned, and uh, the ensemble, you know, paying close attention to, you know, the orchestra, the strings. Like this passage, for example, I think it's so beautiful because the cello is doing with me, you know. And then I respond. passage, you know, the chalice has this opportunity to be really, uh, it, like I said, it's very pleading-like, you know, and uh, I, I love that section. The Liszt Malédiction is going to uh, be the centerpiece in a concert uh, that, again, in one way or other, touches on this uh, theme of impending October 31st. Uh, the bookends for the concert are the scores for two absolutely top-flight horror films. One is The Brood by my favorite living filmmaker, David Cronenberg, probably most famous for his remake of The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. Uh, this is an early score by Howard Shore, uh, who has gone on to score some, well, most of David Cronenberg's movies. Uh, probably most famously his scores for the Lord of the Rings films. He also scored Ed Wood, the very comical biopic uh, about uh, Edward D. Wood, uh, starring Johnny Depp. And we're going to end with a piece that oh, I can never conduct it enough. Uh, the music for Psycho. Um, I, I think it's the greatest film score ever written. And one of the many things that makes it unique is that uh, it's scored entirely for strings. The anecdote has it that when Hitchcock went to Hermann, in spite of the fact that all of their collaborations to date had been in color, and he said, I'm making Psycho in black and white, Hermann said, then I'll write you a black and white score. And that's why he only used strings. He felt that the blacks, whites, and grays of the photography were best matched by an orchestra of like instruments, so he only used strings. But that in no way... Uh, cut him off from being incredibly inventive and his use of the string orchestra is shockingly virtuoso. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you in on one of my favorite in-jokes about Psycho, which you, which you uh, are not aware of until you see the score being performed. Everybody knows the... Uh, there, there are two incredibly iconic movie themes. Uh, one of them, of course, is Jaws. Where are we here? And the other is the murder scene from Psycho, which starts way up here. Etc. So um, when you hear it played, it's, it's of course strident and horrific and wonderful. Um, when you play a stringed instrument, uh, you have a bow, and a composer will frequently indicate whether she or he wants something played down bow or up bow. And if the composer, in this case, hadn't given any indication, you would think that it would just be down, up, down, up, down, up, down. But there's a, a very grim pun in that Hermann indicates with a, with a musical symbol that he wants every single note played down bow. So it looks like the whole orchestra is going, <laughs> they're taking part in the murder at that point of poor Janet Lee. Um, so, so you're going to see the whole orchestra slashing away at their instruments, doing a series of down bows instead of just down, up, down. Again, I, I'm, I'm not sure how much of a sense of humor Bernard Herrmann had. He, he came off as a pretty hard-bitten Brooklynite. But, uh, but th that, is, that is probably about the most blackly humorous joke I can think of in, in any film score ever written. Um, we're also going to have music by my beloved Rafe Vaughn Williams, his five variants on Dives and Lazarus, a beautiful English folk song that has a rather grim plot that I'll talk to the audience about on the day of the concert. 
And a couple of surprise pieces. Uh, let's just say we're going to flirt with the world of ragtime in the midst of this otherwise very serious concert. Uh, the performance is going to take place on Sunday afternoon, October 15th, uh, 2.30 p.m. at the Federal Way Performing Arts and Entertainment Center. Uh, please go to our website and uh, find out about how to get tickets and how to get as many as possible. And uh, I think that's about all I have to say about the program at this point. Jaza, any concluding thoughts from you? I'm looking forward to working with you and with the Federal Way Symphony. Thank you. Thank you. We're looking forward to it, too.